Right, so this is another childhood game. This one I actually did have on NES. I don't think it was a Game Boy equivalent to this. Got really funky music as well. Let's go back to 4x3 mode. I like how the game just... I like how Rare Replay just dishes out achievements for simply starting a game. So this came out in 1989, so three years after I was born then, pretty much. I'm kind of surprised by how many Rare games we actually had on the NES, like, when, when I had an NES, because it was this. Uh, Battletoads we didn't have, obviously, but we had it on Game Boy, which is close enough. Um, what was the other one I was thinking of? Uh, Solar Jetman and Digger T Rock. But of course, I wasn't really aware that this was all the stuff from where, Rareware back in the day. Like, this was before Donkey Kong Country, which is kind of where they sort of hit their stride with, like, games and stuff. Being a Nintendo second party. So this is Snake Rattle and Roll. And you play as a snake who has got, like, a tiny tail. But if you eat um, these beads, your tail will gradually get bigger. So it's kind of, it kind of is like Snake, except it's a platformer. I was born in 86. Also the controls are a bit weird, like it's in a isometric perspective, but you have to press... You press right to go sort of down diagonally, and then you press down to go this way. no way to sort of rebind the buttons so that you can make it control like an isometric thing. Something that I guess you could eventually get used to after a while. So the aim is to actually get the tail to the maximum size so that you can weigh down the machine at the end to open the gate to the exit. So when you see the tail flashing at the end there that means you're full. You need to get to the end of the level with it. If I recall, there's a bonus stage on this little island. Yeah. So this is purely just for points. I think you get extra lives if you get lots of points, so let's go for it. Also, the little beads, I think, determine the, how tricky they are to eat. Red being the easiest, yellow being the hardest, and then blue is kind of in between because the yellow ones go really fast. So there's the exit, like this door here, and you need to be at max, max tail. You can hit the bell on this machine. Then you can go in the door. Yes, I said 96. 86, sorry. Why did I say 96? You, you know what I mean. Three years before, 89 is 86. So unlike Battletoads, this just kind of eases you in and it continues to sort of gradually ramp up the challenge. But the last couple levels are pains in the asses, and I don't think I'll be able to beat it. But I'll at least get to show you most of the game. Also, the first level in the game has a warp zone that takes you to the third last level in the game. Which is kind of cool if you don't want to play the entire game all over again. But we're, I'm just going to show you the actual levels and just chill for a bit. I don't think you'll see as much salt here until we get to the later levels, but it can be tricky. One of these small islands might be a bonus. That one is. Usually the bonus is located in a very out of the way um, manhole. Also, oh, the little bean things, whatever they're called, 
take on different forms in each stage, this time they're all in springs. Didn't get all of them that time, I missed the yellow. Extra time. Also, one of the enemies in this game is a giant Monty Python foot. We might even see that shortly. I don't know if it's in this stage, but it's not. It won't be too long before we see it. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Fucking just a man Monty Python foot. Extra life. Yeah, usually if you defeat those guys, they they drop an extra life. But in this game you don't die in one hit, but the Monty Python foots can squash you in one hit. If, plus your, uh, your health is tied to your tail as well. Like your last hit is when you have nothing on your tail. So you get hit once you lose one piece of tail, you get hit you lose another piece of tail and then if you have no tail and you get hit you die. I had a feeling that was a, a bonus there. This time the beans. We'll, we'll just call them beans because why not? This time the beans are just have legs. There we go. Is that a toilet lid? What that is, I think that may have been a continue, a credit, possibly. I like how one of the enemies is just a toilet seat, I, I don't understand, but oh, right, controls are reversed. I'm gonna wait because I think that runs out in like a couple of seconds. Yep, it runs out. And I think this makes you go faster as well. This game you can play cooperatively with another player if you want. Which is kinda cool. Plus, unlike Battletoads, if one person loses all the lives, it doesn't um, count against you. I don't remember how many continues you get in this game, I think it's like maybe three or five. I want to see what's up there, I think there's another bonus or an extra life. think I can make it. Screw it. Okay, that's a bonus. Nice and full. Also, that part down there is instant death. Even though it looks like there's platforms down there, you'll just die. Like the entire level is just this part up here. If it looks like you can't jump back up from here, like from that part for example, just down there, if it looks like you can't jump back up, that's an instant death plane. Because like, you'll just die the second you try to drop down there. can't 
jump in the water, by the way, so you've got to kind of gradually ease yourself over. There we go. Amazing! Yeah, the, the the main snake is rattle and then second player is roll. HDMI switch box is still not working. I had to hook the Xbox up directly. Yeah, this um clockwork dial is is a power up that makes you go faster. Oh fuck. That looks like an extra light, but it was just a bomb. See, so, like I said, the beans do something different every time. Damn. Well, I had no tail when I got hit there, so I died. Right, so this time the, the beans are squishy. By the looks of it. Sometimes the beans that get shot out at those machines end up being bombs. You've got to be careful. Yep, this game is quite weird. I think there was a, a Genesis version of this as well, which is weird. Like, it's basically just a port of this, just with slightly nicer looking graphics. I'm not going to be able to show you it because I don't think I can beat this game. I mean, I could give it my best shot, but I don't think, I don't think I'm going to be able to beat it. But there is a interesting thing that happens if you beat the game. So I think for, for that I'll have to show you a YouTube clip. Is that foot coming back down or is it gone? Yeah, I think it left. Damn it. A game about snakes growing their tails with Monty Python feet and toilet seats. Oh fuck, I landed on the spike. Trying to get that power up. Oh, that's a bomb. Yeah, if it doesn't flash, it's a bomb. That's how you tell. But it's kind of cool to see that this game got on re 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 replay just because it's not tied to any Nintendo uh, properties. Because this is one of the obscure relatively obscure rare games that a lot of people don't seem to talk about. Oh, bonus. DJ Bruce is going to be looking at the switch box tomorrow I think, so he's going to see if he can figure out what the issue is. I think it's just the switch box is on its way out. It's weird because it works with all the other devices, as far as I can tell, it's just with the PS4 that it's kind of cutting in and out at random. Oh fuck, I don't have much time left. Speed run. Wait, what? Wait, where was I supposed to go there? I just jumped off by accident. I'm just gonna have to take that death. I've been 
kind of taking my time there, so... Oh wait, I can jump up here, I didn't see that. Oh no, wait. I jump over here and then I jump over there. Right, okay, now, now I understand. If only I'd known that, I could have got extra time. Oh fuck, I don't have full tail. So I need to go back. Also, I think this game has fall damage, kind of. Not so much fall damage, but just you die if you fall too far. I have to be careful how far I fall down. There we go, tail is full. We're not talking about the Nintendo Switch, we're talking about the HDMI Switch box. Sorry for the confusion. The Switcher, we'll just call it the Switcher then. Or Switch box, whatever. I need to make sure I don't get hit between here and the uh, machine. Ah, oh, fuck off. And the annoying part is there's nothing up there that gives you more... It gives you more beans, so I need to go all the way back down and get another one. I guess this is where the difficulty starts to pick up because of that. Damn it. Oops. I accidentally walked off there when I was trying to check the tail. I've got lots of devices that are plugged in, yes. Because the TV only has like three HDMI ports and I've got more than three HDMI devices. I've got the Switch, Nintendo Switch, I've got the Xbox One, the PS4, PS3, uh, Wii U, uh, my DVR box, Xbox 360, ah fucking hell, did I, did I get hit? I did get hit. I just realised that I'm... Fuck off. There, this is where the salt starts to come in because of this part. I mean, the game does ease you in at least. So it hasn't been overly difficult up to this point. But this part in particular is annoying because it's like... Try to get all the way over there without getting hit. Because those manholes contain beans as well, but you can only get one. Like, you can only use it once. So once it's emptied, and no, 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 nothing comes out of them again. How many contenders of that, too? Are you for real? Fucking lost my entire tail because of that? Oh, there's the full damage. Yep, this is the part where it starts to get annoying. You 
Yeah, I don't remember how many continues this game gives you. I think it's like three or five. Then I'm gonna have to spend a couple minutes here rebuilding the tail. So usually if you fall off the ledge or something, like if you fall off the ledge, you lose a life, but your tail is preserved. But if you die by getting squished by an anvil or a Monty Python foot, you lose all of your tail pieces. Which is extremely annoying, especially right there. Now I need to go do this, and then I need to go back up and try to not get, get hit by that. So when you think of platformers, and you think of the the, the most hate, the most universally hated platformer um, theme archetype, we'd probably think Ice World because slippery physics making platforming more difficult. Well, in this game, there's just two ice levels, and they're both at the very end of the game, like the the, the final two levels. I think the game has 10 levels. Look how many fucking pellets I got. I've got so many pellets went off the screen. See that? I don't remember if you get extra lives from points in this game, I would assume so. Surprised the sound effect can go that high pitched. This time the beans are birds. Bean birds. Uh, he's not coming back, is he? Game's got pretty good music. Fuck. Really? Damn it. Let's try that again. I think I can get through the first few levels really quickly and easily. Just that one fucking part where it's like you've got to get all the way over this one part with a full tail and not get hit or squished. Right, let's go over. Ah, oh, damn it. Fucking drafts piece or whatever that's called. Checker piece. Yeah, if you stay in the water too long, the shark comes out to bite. I think there's an extra life in one of these. I guess not. It will just blaze through these first few levels quick, really quickly just to get back there.
Come on. I think that's the, the tongue power-up, so my tongue is extended to max length. Yeah, that's what that does. Come on. Yeah, the, these beans, the spring ones are annoying. I think yellow beans get you the most tail length, like, build up really quickly if you just eat the, the yellow ones. I'll eat the one, other ones while I'm waiting for the yellow to spawn. There we go, we're at full. See an extra life up there. Fuck, well, that was not worth grabbing. even get it. How the fuck did I even get that one? I think I just put that extra life there to tease you. At the very least I can get this one. Platforming this is a little bit awkward due to the, the isometric perspective. In the way the D pad controls aren't one to one with it. But it's perfectly playable. You just need like that adjustment period to, to understand how it feels. Yeah. See, like I said, if you fall from too great a length, then you just die. Well, I can't, like, jump over those spikes and then land down here, like, because you'll just die before you even hit the ground. So that power-up just reverses your control direction, so I'm just going to... Okay, there we, there we go. Just hold that opposite direction until I start moving the right way again. That's what I was going to say there. Overshot that. Right, now we're coming up to level four, which is the one I kept dying on. Goodbye then. Remind me to show you... Remind me to show you the ending to this game after I'm done with it. Because I might end up forgetting. Because I want, I want to show you what the ending is. I don't think I'm going to be able to beat this game. Fucking hell. Did 
The game is nice enough to give you a warp zone on the first stage that takes you to near the end of the game, but the final two levels are insanely difficult, so I don't see myself being able to beat those. Because the final two levels basically demand mastery of control to sort of get around the really... Like, the final two levels are ice levels, right? But they're not just ice levels, they're ice levels with lots of steep slopes and weird angles that you've got to kind of jump around. When you see it, you'll you'll start to understand just how difficult it really gets. Alright, oh, the tail's not full. Beating it isn't, isn't a bomb. One more should do it. Not nope, one more. There we go. Yeah, it does take a while to build that up. Again, yellows make it speed up a bit more, but yellows don't appear that often. I'm going to take my time here. What? I don't fucking know you could get hit mid death. Like that that is that's actually new to me. I never fucking knew, knew that could happen. Wow. Just, just when I thought I've seen everything in this game it throws a curveball. That should be enough. Yep. Like I I fell to my like it went to that sort of die state where you sort of fall to your death because I hit the spike. Then on the way down I hit the object that would um, did reduce your tail size by one. That fucking blade, razor blade thing. I didn't even know that that was a thing. Like, I didn't know you could still get hit by that on the way down if you were already falling to your death. time we've got, still got a good few credits and lives. I think this calls for a save state. This music's pretty funky. Got the yellow. The yellow gives me two tail pieces right off the bat, so it's good. Yeah, this game's got a pretty decent selection of tracks. I think a lot of them are meant to be like royalty free, like uh, I don't know if it's royalty free, but it's like song like meant to be like rock rock and roll songs from like the sixties. Hence the the name Snake Rattle and Roll. So I think like a song is literally called Shake Rattle and Roll. Anyway, if this to run out. 
reverse controls, by the way. Just waiting for that to stop. Okay. Annoyingly, they put that right in front of the carpet, so I, I, had, to, I had to grab that. That's a real extra life. That's a fake. Can't quite tell what that is in 3D space. There we go. Okay, there we go. Just waiting for that reverse control thing to run out. Also, I think they push you off the edge to look like pistons. Trying to see if I could hit that guy. See if I can beat him, I'll get an extra life out of it, most likely. Oh fuck. Well, at this point I'm gonna have to go for it now. Thank you, Bean, for dooming me. Now I'm going to have to go for him so I can get another life back. This guy's taking a lot of hits. Oh, come on! Oh, we're one being short. If I knew that was there, I would have grabbed that. the bird beans. Equip lashes. Again, it's going to be difficult to do with my limited bandwidth. I used to stream Quip Lash, but I've run into trouble doing stuff like that when you've got like when you've got like 0 0.8 megabytes upload. Not even that, 0 0.6. Okay, I see how this is going to work. Oh right, I thought the carpet was going to disappear there. Really? I'm not even sure if I should be angry at myself at that. Then just to fuck you over, they put a reverse thing at the very end. But I noticed it there. Like if you weren't prepared for that, you would just walk back into the spikes. for stage 5. Now the problem is I still have to stream it, which takes up a good bit of bandwidth. I'd rather just not fiddle with it to be honest, so we'll just 
early for that. So I used to do Smash on Sundays, but I can't do that anymore because I don't have the bandwidth for that either. But I can do multiplayer games on consoles if I use my hotspot on my phone. But the hotspot only works with games that don't rely on extremely heavy packet data sending, like a lot of packets going back and forth. Mario Kart and Borman don't require very intensive packet sending and receiving. Smash Bros on the other hand does, so it would work, but it wouldn't work well. Fuck. Also, this is basically RNG. As far as I can tell, those bells just fall on random spots. I don't know what that means. Ah! Good. G U D. Good. to grab that. Uh, I panicked there because I saw that bell coming toward me. Yeah, you need that to claim this waterfall. Doesn't explicitly explain that, but you do need that item to actually get up here. That's like the only part in the game where you can do that. <sighs> the drawing game is called Drawful. Uh, please get up. Also, you can't jump in the water, so I've just got to edge to ground. You can overshoot that and na 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 na. Nah. I got worried about the jump fall distance there. I don't even know if the stage has any beans, I think the exit just might be open for you. Oh, there we go. Good thing I've got safe states. Also, all the music up until this point has been like... Sitting. 50s, 60s, 50s rock and roll and happy go lucky stuff. Now, this is like the first rule song where it's like, oh, this is going to be dangerous. You're going to get your shit wrecked if you're not careful. Like that. I think this song also plays on the final two stages as well, which is quite appropriate because fuck those final two levels. Yeah, those are pistons that push off. No, 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 no. I 
tried to jump two squares and overshot that because of the speed. Can I climb this waterfall? No, for some reason you can't climb that one. This only just adds to the confusion. I wonder if I still have it. Like I just... I died there, but I don't know if I still actually have it on me. Oh right, I do. I like how that foot doesn't even come to life. It's come to life. Until you get to the top of that waterfall. I was waiting for that foot to come back. I saw that piston there, I couldn't land on that one. Oh, come on now. Not a game over, is it? Like, game game over? Oh right, there's one more. Ah! I tried to sort of curve myself in there. They're the exact same thing again. There. Sensational. Yeah, that's like my last life and life. Last continue anyway, so whatever. Okay, that's nice. I didn't save state because it was like my final life and continuous. I didn't want to kind of have to keep reloading. I want to see if I can get through this part without using up a continue. And I have at least two continues to work with. There without that item. Wait, that can fucking kill you? Really? Really now? Okay, that's also new to me. I've never seen that before. Mainly because it never fucking normally lands anywhere close to where I'm actually standing. Discovering new things all the time with this game. 
and keep in mind this is a game I actually grew up with, I've played this a lot. I'm not as good at it as I am with some other NES games, but it is a game that I've got prior experience with. Right, well that's far better than my previous attempt. I used up one continue but I've still got two lives and an extra continue to spare. So we're just going to save over that. But yeah, I didn't fucking know that item that you were supposed to pick up actually can crush you if it lands on top of you. Wow, that waterfall moves fast. I think that's the continue though. Even when you die, the clock's still ticking. Yep, 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 yep. I don't remember if there's any beans in this one either. No! That tail may, that um, tongue may actually help. See that's kind of annoying, you have to go across this and then double back. And then double back one more time with that fucking marble there. Enemy just disappeared. I'm not sure when I bet I'm gonna get hit by one of these rolling marbles of doom. Ah, I thought I could step on the ledge there, it was taking too long. Let one more continue. damage boost through that one because fuck it. Oh! Waterfall, why? I mean, at least I got past that part without getting squashed, but still. to try position myself just right there and I went right off the edge. Oh, I've got another continue, sweet. But that was my last one.
I was trying to anticipate that there. Yeah, that's quite difficult actually. There we go. Oh, no, 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 no. Bit of a crap shoot this area, I've noticed. Yeah, let's just waste the player's time even more and have more of these things spawn. I thought that was going to connect. This one also doesn't have beans, surprisingly enough. Oh, this is going to suck. I mean, at least they put that safety step there. I'm actually kind of surprised that I made that. Wow. <laughs> I'm surprised. Phenomenal. Yeah, Phenomenal's right. Right, well, I've got good news for you. If I think this is the stage I think it is. Yeah, this one you go underwater. Right, I've got good news for you. Um. Turns out, this is where the warp zone takes you, so we're going to start with three fresh credits and take the warp zone. So we're just going to briefly pop out of the game. We've unlocked a new video in the Rare, Re Rare Revealed Gallery. No thanks. So we're going to... Them. I'll show you how to get the warp zone. You need to be really quick though. Right, let's uh, create a save. Put one there. Yeah, because we're in the final three stages of the game and the warp zone takes you to that stage that we just quit at. So rather than continue with like two lives and zero continues, we'll continue with like four continues. So you basically just got to go through the stage as quickly as possible. And that's not good enough. Anything slows you down and you can't, you've already missed it. Imagine you have to keep fucking resetting your system just to do this. I know I have done that a few times. Ah fuck. Yeah, that's the warp zone. A slightly slowing down there to compensate for an enemy, and that was still too slow. That might even be it. As in, that might have what cost me that. It is cool though that they put a warp zone there just so you can skip the bulk of the game. That's like something Battletoads doesn't even do. Like that just lets you skip two levels and then skip two more levels. There we go. I'm going to create a save point there. So get ready to see the final three levels. The third last level is actually not that bad. Final two levels though, that's where it gets intense. Yep, this is the same level. I remember because this is... I remember the colour palette and that pool of water when you come into this part.
The next part of this level is actually down there, but again, you can't jump down because fall damage. So this gimmick is completely new to this level. You can swim around and the beans are fish. In this one, you need to get a full tail just to open the door to get to the next part. Of course, when you're swimming around in isometric 3D perspective, it's kind of hard to tell where the fish actually are. Come on. Come on. See what I mean? Even if you know where it is, it's still kind of hard to hit it. That should be it. Not quite. And the next part. I think there's like three of these in total. Ah, fuck. Did I just cost myself both of those? Come on. Don't be like that. Not bad, not bad so far. Don't know if you can actually eat the black ones, I think they're just enemies. That should be enough, hopefully. One or two more. There we go. Yeah, I think this is the final one. You probably noticed that the beans are coming from those seaweeds. If the seaweeds run dry, then I think that's it, you lose a life. Because obviously there's nothing you can do after that. Get that yellow one, because they give me the most. Oh, there's time limit as well, of course. Uh, the cheap mints, please. I, I didn't realise there was more there. You can get through these three parts before the time runs out, it, you just have to be quite quick. Oh, there's four parts to this. Also, there was a clock down there that I didn't see. Right, so this will be the last part then. I think. Come down here, please. Let's try and defeat these guys. Maybe they turn into a regular fish bean. Oh, they do? Right, okay. That should be enough. Nope, this will be the last one then, that will push me over. So this level is not terribly difficult, it just takes a while. In fact, this is probably one of the easiest levels in the entire game. And that's it. Right, get ready for stage 9, because stage 9 and stage 10 are the hardest ones in the whole game, and for good reason.
Wow, that's a lot of points. A lot of beans as well. We'll make a save there. Save. Yes. So, welcome to hell. You probably noticed right away that there's slopes down there, like icy slopes. This level doesn't fuck, fuck around. Oh look, it's the ice cubes from fucking Battletoads. Making a cameo. I think that's, the, it looks like the ice cube from Battletoads. Maybe that's the, the reference. Or it's just purely coincidence. Up, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, of course someone's going to do that. Come on, I wasn't even on the fucking ground when I got crushed. Oh, you can go fuck off. Physics. Also, for some reason, the I, the the foot has a stitch on it. I don't know why. Maybe because it's been maybe because it's got frostbite. I don't even know. I think the final two levels have um, beans. Yeah, imagine, imagine trying to beat this game when you're five years old. And then becoming the master of like the first eight levels and then you run into this one. I think eventually I'll get an extra life off of this thing. Eh, screw it. These beans are quite annoying to get actually because they just fly everywhere. They try to get away from you. Best bet is just to sort of eat them before they take off. Ugh. Caught, of course, the yellow one would be a fake. screen so that I can get some more tap here. Uh, uh, fucking hell. Uh, uh. Yeah, when you're dealing with ice it's bad enough, but ice and then constant 45 degree slopes almost every turn. And if you think this is hard, stage 10 is even worse. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be nice to get rid of that foot so I can actually focus on these.
Jesus Christ, how many hits does this thing take? I, I don't even remember how many hits that thing takes, but... Fucking hell. Whatever. And there goes my chance to get a yellow. And look, it's just fucking flying down there, it's not even giving any shits. Yeah. No, I fucking hate that jump. I'm trying to get them off the screen now, that's why I did that. Okay, now we're full, finally. Still on the clock though, we've got 40 seconds. 40 schmeckens, because it's not real seconds. Why? Somehow landed on there. And everything's gone. See how difficult that one is. Try right, again. I think there's a trick here. Yep. Yeah. No. I thought I could bounce on that cube to get to the higher part, but I guess you can't. Oh fuck that. It, the, the ice physics really make it difficult to maintain control. It's kind of difficult to describe, but if you play that, you would probably understand why this is so hard. Doesn't help that up doesn't make you go up. Up makes you go, like, in this direction. Up goes that way, left goes that way. If I played this on like Retro Arch or something, I could rebind the keys to sort of make it work better for me. Oh, uh, come on! Fucking hell. <sighs> Got all offense to death. I suppose they are grabbable if they don't fly off the edge. <laughs> that was not worth it. Classic example of getting too greedy there. At least one more continue, I think. 
for this part. I'm not going to be spending that much longer on this game, I'm going to be moving on to Mystical Ninja shortly. Nin did I say Ninja? Mystical Ninja. Mystical Ninjara. Fucking right angle. And just so you know, these are all sloped platforms, you have to constantly sort of fight against it. These, every one of these ice blocks are being tilted at a 45 degree angle. So if I let go, I'm going to slide all the way back down. I'll, t I'll take that hit, whatever. The pressure switch has already been hit. Doesn't matter if I get a hit now, as long as I don't get crushed or fall. There we go. Wow is right. I think I only have one continue left, but I'll show you stage 10. There. Already off to a great start. Like, everything is still fucking sloped. So this is as difficult as I remember it being. It's... I didn't exaggerate. I challenge anyone to try beat this game. Oh, okay. Right, okay, we're safe for now. Beans are the same this time. Can't waste time on that. Ah, oh, fuck off. I only get like three lives here, so whatever. Whatever. This is like the only flat surface I've seen so far in this stage. Ah, I messed up. Come on, you can't possibly not allow me to grab that one. Did I take a screenshot? Alright, okay. Yeah, um, LT is screenshot apparently. I just squeezed my finger there in an angle and I was shaking the controller frustratingly. Actually saved me there. That's kind of funny, actually. The fact that that sort of stopped me from going off the edge. Nice. Didn't get hit once there.
Fuck. I've kind of found a good spot to sort of grab them from. A yellow one would be nice though if it would give him one. Died there from fall damage. And meanwhile, I'm losing all this time trying to do this. It's only going to buy me just a little bit of time. Fuck! Piss off. You know what we need to melt all this ice? We need a lot of fucking salt. Maybe then it would actually be easy. Like, so we try to... I would try to destroy the leg. That takes... That also takes far too long. Yeah, if you're wondering what the, the bell thing was, it was down there. Ah. So we need to be as quick as possible to this part. Get back up, get back up. I could stand in the middle here, that could kind of work. Give me something. Just throw me a bone, please. Not enough yet. I think one more might do it. Not that one though. Go up there to get rid of all of them so that I can wait for them to spawn again. Once you've got three of them on the screen, no more appear, and once those three are out of reach, you can't really do anything but despawn them. 
and then wait for more to appear. See what I mean? I'll just take the hit. I mean, as long as the tail is preserved. Oh, right. Fucking. Yeah, this game is just as hard to remember that. It's it's fucking ruthless. It's brutal even. I'm not taking that. I'm just gonna save scum this so that I can show you the rest of this level. Called Pebbles. Also, I need to find a way to turn those achievements off because they really interfere with this. If it spawned more yellows, that would be fantastic. Somehow I had a feeling that was going to happen. Wait. It's this one, isn't it? Come on! Yeah, have let's have that one yellow be a bomb and not a real fucking pebbly. Again, yellow is a bomb. Okay, we're full now, finally.
wrong button. Temporarily forgot which one was the jump button there. There. There we go. So we're pretty much in the final stretch, now we need to get up here. to save again. I'm only doing this many saves just so I can show you the rest of the level. I'm not doing the entire thing in one go. It's a very tight jump. This last part is basically just a, a, the ultimate test of your platforming on these icy slopes. Yeah. One was the most recent one. Two fifty six. Which is the actual time in the UK, by the way, if you're wondering. Ah, I'm not. I'm not taking that. If I'm gonna die, I don't want to fucking die at that part. I just need to build momentum for that jump. Nope. I got past that without fucking getting crushed, I'm not taking that. Ah! That's right, jump on up there. Like you would think, it ultimately doesn't matter because I can save state on my last life anyway, but I don't want to keep loading save states on my final life if I can just do it now and get it out of the way. That way when I load save states I'll have like two or three lives before I have to reload again. You know what, that's fine. I've still got two more. Alright, how am I supposed to avoid that one? This is the furthest I've gotten so far. Yeah, I did. Like, just the slightest wrong movement and you're off. Also, check this out. You've got to turn all the... We've got to make a corner jump here to land on the other side of that slope. Edge over a bit. Ah, oh, fuck! Evie Gen should fucking play this game, really? Like, he should play this. I think he would get a kick out of it for the, for an Evie Gen episode. Because this is perfect Evie Gen material. Again, imagine trying to do this when you're less than 10 years old, it's next to impossible. I think one of my brothers actually did manage to beat this level and then there's like an end game after that. But I don't think we've ever been able to beat the end game. Nope. 
I honestly don't know how I'm supposed to avoid that. But that's positioning just the right spot to fuck you over. Yeah, there's a reason I safe state there. But yes. Almost done with this, by the way. It's gonna be another snowball, I think. Okay, I guess not. Right, so we're just about to come up to the final part, like this staircase up here. So let me break it down for you. You have to climb that staircase of ladders, every staircase is on a 45 degree slope. Now that's hard enough, but then take into account that these final set of staircases don't have a wall against them, so you have nothing to lean against on either side. You have to climb 45 degree stairs with no wall to sort of keep you in check. I don't know if you saw that there, but the, st the door is just above it. Fucking. Like, you see this? Like, there's no wall behind this. And you can just easily fall off the other side. People are rare and insane just for coming up with this. You want NES hard mode? There, here it is, right here. Wait a minute, did I not save state after that? Hang on, loads. I guess I didn't. That's fine. We'll, we'll just sa we'll save state closer to that part. You know, the time it took me to attempt that, I could have just reloaded the save state. Uh, yeah. Yeah, up until this point I've had walls to sort of, sort of lean against. Just as insurance. But now I don't even have that for the final part. Ah. Ah! Oops, I forgot I was on a slope. I wish there was like a, a button for quick save because going through these choppy menus is a bit of annoying. Like for some reason the menus are running at like 20 frames per second and it's eating up the inputs every time I'm trying to press the buttons. We've got two lives here. I mean, I'll start on there at least. Yeah. Like that looks like I fucked up there, but it's just complicated. Oh fuck. So that was the jump button there for a second. That's actually kind of difficult to make that jump there because of the slope affecting your jump arc. It would. Of course, jumping off these slopes also affects your jumping arc, so you've got to take that into account. So it's even harder than it actually would think you think it may be. You think, oh, it's not that hard. Believe me, it's fucking hard. Mm. 
Right, so check this out. This is the real test. <laughs> nope. Like, cutting around that alone is an ordeal. Oops. Did we go the wrong state? Which one was it? 305? Mystical Ninja is coming up shortly, so that's the game I want to play after this. save and quick load button would be really handy for this part so that I can really save scum to my full potential. Like that first jump is kind of difficult to make but then the other jumps aren't so bad but you've got the angle thing going for you against it. Like this part's flat, all the other parts are at a 45 degree angle, like, if you can't tell. How did kids even beat this game? With like Three continues and three lives. Ah, oh, that, that was my fault, I pressed the wrong button. I keep mentally resetting back to the wrong button for jumping. There's a reason I haven't streamed this game until this point. <laughs> it's fucking hard. What? The only reason I'm showing it now is because it's part of the Rare Replay collection, so I figure, why not? I'll give you guys something to, I, get, I guess, get a bit of entertainment out of. Like, because the whole game up to this point has been sort of increasing in difficulty in the right way. And then this is... Basically Turbo Tunnel times 10. Like, yes, this is even harder than Turbo Tunnel. I can say that after having just beaten Turbo Tunnel. Like, that fucking jumping arc is really difficult to make without falling off the edge. I'm not missing anything, this is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Fucking button makes it really hard to do it! <sighs> let me try the... Let me try to... Visually depict what is going on here. Hang on a second. I'm gonna try something that I need to bring up. I kind of explained this briefly, but I'm going to try to explain it better. Hang on a second. Add window capture. Let's see if this. Right, okay, so I brought up MS Paint just to briefly illustrate what's going on here with the controls. So let's say that this is the grid that we're walking on. Like this is isometric perspective. Let's just pretend that's pretty accurate. And this is the D-pad that I'm working with to control the character. And then just say the character is here. Now it's an isometric perspective, but you think if you press up, the character moves upwards. Like, that makes sense. That's like, even though it's 3D space, you would think that's one to one. But what's actually happening is if you press up, you're actually going in this direction. If you press left, going in this direction. If you press right, you're going in this direction. Then down will take you that way. Then of course this does that, this does that, and so on. Try wrapping your head around that and realize that's what's going on as I'm playing this. 
that is basically why this is so hard to sort of get around that platform because I'm trying to adjust the 45 degree change in controls. This is how the original NES version was as well, this is not been changed for the rear replay collection. And as far as I can tell there's no way to change the inputs to make it one to one. Oh fuck I was up there for a brief moment. I didn't even think that was going to land. I'll give this a couple more tries and then we're going to change games. <laughs> I think I've just about hit my limit with the salt tonight. I want to enjoy something a bit more fun. Yeah. So... Let me... Oops. So let me, let me just uh, bring that back up again. And I'm going to illustrate you something else very briefly. Let me make this brush a little bit smaller because it doesn't need to be that big. So let's say that we're standing here. This is the part that we're trying to jump from. And this is the part that we're trying to land on. And then there's the snake guy, the little snake that we're trying to get from here to here. But you can only approach it from this side. You can't jump there because it's raised. So with the d-pad, you know that it's kind of like adjusted to 45 degrees, so if we want to move this way, we need to press, was it again, move this way? I believe it was, yeah it was that way. You need to press that direction, and of course you have to curve around, you have to press diagonal up, and then of course you've got to turn back around to land on this edge. So I'm kind of doing sort of a di I'm kind of turning d-pad but it's kind of difficult to mentally wrap my mind around that. And it's busting my balls right now. Don't want to get another 100 deaths, we've probably already passed it. I mean let's be honest. Yeah, you've got to put those inputs in really quickly to actually get around there successfully. Every time I fall down, even if I land safely, I'm just going to reload the safe state. I'm not even going to attempt to get back on this flat surface. Ah, crap. I don't know why I jumped there, I panicked. I think I've got a better feel for approaching this angle here. I nearly did it twice in a row. Too much. Yeah, I'm done with this. I'm putting the controller in, I'm finished with it. I kind of started going up the stairs there, but again you've got no wall to support you, so if you overshoot any of those jumps you're going off. <laughs> I, know, I know it's by Rare, but who specifically designed this game? Like, who on Rare made it? Because they're fucking sadistic is what they are. Still a fun game though, but those last couple levels are insanely difficult. Once again, I wasn't exaggerating on that. So before we stop, I am going to show you the ending to this game. I'm also going to show you the end game as well, because why not? Long play. This long play is 
only 35 minutes long. Also, for some reason, it's the PAL version, because listen to the music. Hang on, listen to this. You hear how the tone's gone down a bit, because it's like the PAL version? Close enough. Right, so I'm going to bring this up so I can show you what exactly is going on here. So... So let's watch this person actually get to the end. I don't know how they even have the skills to do this, like it's nothing. I challenge anyone to try that and have no problems. Jesus Christ, that person's up. awesome, I guess. Pause the video for just a second so I can resize this. I want to show you the end game, followed by the ending. The ending specifically I want to show off, but I'm going to show you this because it's here. Guess this is close enough. Right, so this is the end of the game. You've climbed the ice mountain and you're now on the moon. Which was made of cheese and there's a foot with a flag. So all you have to do is defeat the foot, but it takes like a million fucking hits and you've got asteroids trying to kill you. Wow, he actually beat that really quickly. So where do you go from the moon once you get there? Like, that's as high as you go, but then you go inside the spaceship. Hop. Rattle and roll are at the top. See you soon. Snakes in space. Yes, they actually advertised a sequel to the game, <laughs> which never fucking came to be. Like, this never happened. So they were already in the planning stages of the, the sequel, and I guess for some reason or other they decided not to actually make it. Like, there's a trademark in everything, look, there's a small trademark up in the corner there. Snakes in space, copyright, trademark. And that's it, that's the whole game. See, that's the thing that I remember when I watched, like, a long play of that, like, years ago, I was like, what actually happens when you beat the game? Is it just, like, the credits? It's like, nope. It just says, stay tuned for this next game, and then that next game never happened. Well, there you go then. Snakes in Space will never be a stream because the game doesn't exist.